Being told that you're gonna spend the rest of your life in prison is a lot to take in, regardless of the crime you committed. <laughs> but just when you think you know how people will react to such a sentence, they go and surprise you. <laughs> From a laughing killer to one that yelled at a judge, here are 20 craziest reactions of convicts given a life sentence. Number 20. Esteban Carpio Boston, Massachusetts convicted prison inmate Esteban was sentenced to life in prison without parole for the murder of a policeman in 2005. When Providence police were questioning him for stabbing an 85-year-old woman, a detective had left the room to get a drink of water for Esteban. This left him alone in the room with Police Detective Sergeant James L. Allen. Once the detective had left the room, Esteban grabbed James's gun and shot him twice, resulting in his death. Esteban then jumped out the third floor interview room window before being caught less than an hour later. Incredibly, Esteban was brought to his arraignment wearing a mask that was designed to stop offenders from biting or spitting on people. He also had red eyes, cheeks, and a red forehead, along with swelling around his forehead and cranial region. Every day, I face the facts of what I did and what happened. It wasn't so much his crazy reaction that shocked people, but that of his family. When he was sentenced to life in prison, his family screamed and yelled about police brutality. An FBI investigation concluded that excessive force had not been used given the circumstances, and that his injuries were sustained when he jumped from the third floor of the building and during his struggle with law enforcement. Number 19. Anthony Rodriguez Anthony Rodriguez, who had just turned 18, was on parole when he robbed, kidnapped, and sexually assaulted a 25-year-old woman in Martin Luther King Jr. Park, dragging her 105 feet into a bathroom. Anthony had previous arrests for violence, but this appeared to be his first for sexual assault. According to reports, Anthony had been quiet throughout the entire ordeal, but that soon changed when the judge sentenced him to 25 years to life. He started directly talking to the judge with tears in his eyes, yelled profanities, and called the ruling unfair. He had to be forced to sit down. Anthony clearly wasn't happy with the outcome of the trial, and neither was his family. Afterward, his mother said that he didn't deserve life in prison and that something was wrong for him to receive such a heavy sentence. Anthony wasn't the first person to be arrested for the same crime. Previously, Mike Zarate Yacobo was under arrest on suspicion of rape and stayed in a downtown jail for 35 days until DNA evidence cleared him. That DNA evidence instead linked 18-year-old Anthony Rodriguez to the crime. Number 18. Jaleel Smith Riley Jaleel Smith Riley was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole in 2016 for shooting and killing Portia Brooks and severely injuring her boyfriend Aaron Martin during a robbery. Portia and Aaron were sitting in a parked car in Norwood when Jaleel approached the vehicle with two others and ordered Aaron to get out. When Jaleel discovered that he had nothing of value to take, he shot him in the head before leaning into the vehicle and shooting Portia as well. A Crime Stoppers tip led the police to Jaleel, who was charged with aggravated murder, attempted murder, aggravated robbery, and two counts of felonious assault. To avoid the death penalty, he pleaded guilty and faced a sentence of life without parole. When he was sitting in the gallery, Portia's family spoke to the court and Jaleel. Jaleel then had to try and convince the court that he deserved leniency. He started crying in court with tears rolling down his face. He said, I just want to come home one day. I just wanna come home. His attorney stepped in and said Jaleel was someone who felt genuine remorse and thought about what he did every day. He said he couldn't undo what he did. The judge had the final word and sentenced Jaleel to life without parole. As soon as those words came out of his mouth, Jaleel fell to the floor, crying. Number 17. Danta Wright When someone tells you that they've lost their only child, their son, their baby, and their friend, 
it's only natural for you to feel sadness. You might also feel a great deal of remorse if you're the reason why someone isn't alive. But when a victim impact statement was read out to the court and the person responsible for murdering 18-year-old Jordan Klee, the court was in shock. The defendant, 17-year-old Danta Wright, who was sentenced to 23 to 50 years in prison, smiled and nearly laughed. When his lawyer attempted to say that his client said it was never his intention to injure, Danta interrupted him to address the court himself. You might think that at this point he might express remorse from the heart, but that is not what happened at all. Instead, he smiled as he said, I just want to tell y'all I'll be home soon. I love my family. I'll tell y'all I'll be home soon. I'll be Keon. I love my family. This definitely wasn't well received by most people in the courtroom. The judge asked prosecutors if the sentencing agreement was too merciful. He followed up by saying that watching Dana sit there smiling, laughing, and shaking his head like it was no big deal, he was tempted to say he wasn't going to accept the sentencing agreement and take the case to trial. If convicted of felony murder, that would mean Danta would be in prison for the rest of his life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted to do, the judge said. Number 16. Insane Acting Man when a man was charged with possession of a weapon during a violent crime along with murder, he acted in a way that surely made the people around him think he was going to crack at any minute. Not only was he clenching his fist, but he was also making strange sounds, shaking his head, and standing before the judge with his teeth bared for the entire time that she was describing how things were going to play out. The judge also tried to ask the man questions, but he wouldn't answer all of them consistently. Do you answer my questions? When she asked whether he'd like to be screened for a court-appointed lawyer or whether he could hire his own, he didn't answer immediately. He then proceeded to ask the judge whether he looked like he could afford one, and then said he didn't need one. It's not known what the outcome of this case was, but even during the early stages of his case, his reactions were absolutely terrifying. When the video was uploaded to the internet, many people were quick to point out that the man was likely trying to act insane so that he could enter an insanity plea. We're not sure of the case's outcome, but you're surely interested to know whether he managed to keep up this look. Number 15. Jacob Matthew Morgan in 2015, a 14-month-old baby died in a house fire while at home with his 17-year-old brother, Jacob Morgan, of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Jacob was initially charged with murder and pleaded guilty to the crime in October 2021. He was charged with involuntary manslaughter, unlawful conduct towards a child, and third-degree arson after setting his home on fire and willfully killing his brother, Joshua Alexander Hill. The court stated that Jacob set two fires, exited the home, and left his brother inside to die. Jacob hasn't given formal statements about how the fire started, but later said he lit a pillow on fire and threw it in the air. Authorities think two sets of fires were started, one in the master bedroom where the baby was asleep and another in the living room. In a probable cause hearing, Jacob cried, pleaded, and prayed with absolute terror in his eyes before he was charged with arson and murder connected to his brother. He was then led out of the courtroom crying. Eventually, Jacob was charged for the killing of Joshua Hill and he would be sentenced to 15 years in prison. His mother, Julie Hill, said Jacob has developmental issues and loved his little brother. Number 14. Lukachi Kendall Lukachi Kendall was working as a security guard for a strip club where Kiwan Bird and his friend Michael Smathers had gone for a night out. They decided to exit the club, sit in Michael's car for a while, and then return to the club minutes later. Lukachi parked next to Kiwan and Michael and started dressing for his job, which included putting on a vest, gloves, baton, knife, gun, and ammunition. All three men made visual contact before Lukachi retreated to the club. As Kiwan and Michael got out of the car to go back into the club, Lukachi opened fire, shooting Kiwan in the back eight times, killing him. Michael was left paralyzed from the waist down. In court, when Lukachi alleges insanity and requests to be put in a mental institution rather than prison, Kiwan's father starts yelling at Lukachi, screaming that he murdered his son for nothing. You don't need to be laying no, no mental hospital. He need, he need to go to prison, man. Security guards and family tried to calm Kiwan's father, but he had to be dragged out of the courtroom. During the trial, Lukachi didn't present any evidence, didn't testify, and didn't accept court-appointed standby counsel. He was convicted of second-degree murder and attempted murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Number 13. 
Kayla Mendoza. Kayla Mendoza is known for having tweeted too drunk to care before being involved in a wrong way collision on the South Florida Expressway while intoxicated. She took the lives of two women and was sentenced to 24 years in prison. Kayla cried and showed remorse throughout her entire trial and was sentenced in 2014 for her crime. No matter how much time passes, I'm gonna live with that in my heart every day. However, Kayla was soon on a mission to have her sentence reduced to just 10 years after writing an apologetic letter to the judge who had sentenced her. Kayla said she wanted to be out of prison so that she could be involved in Mothers Against Drunk Driving. She also wanted to help save lives, even though she couldn't bring back the lives she took. Kayla also said she didn't want another family to be broken like the families that were broken because of her. Kayla wrote that she planned to take substance abuse classes and is open to probation. She also wanted to work to pay restitution, court costs, and money owed in a civil lawsuit. Judge Hames said prosecutors would respond to Kayla's request within 90 days, and the families of the two women killed planned on making their feelings known. Number 12. Ryan Stone Ryan Stone was sentenced to 160 years in prison for taking officers on a lengthy chase in 2014. He was convicted of several charges, such as attempted manslaughter, child abuse, and car theft during a 90-minute car chase. Ryan stole a car outside a gas station with a four-year-old inside before crashing it into a van. He dragged the van driver out by her legs before stealing it and hitting a state trooper who was laying a tire deflating device, resulting in a broken leg. He struck several more cars before being arrested. In jail, Ryan was videoed bragging about mimicking a video game to a female visitor. He also talked about the potential to profit from the chase video and getting paid by YouTube. His boastful behavior was in direct contrast to how he looked and acted when he was being sentenced to his crimes in the first place. He blamed drugs, acted tearfully, and asked the judge to please give him a break. Ryan and his family said he struggled with drug addiction and that his meth use left him with very little memory of the chase. The goal was for the court to see him as troubled rather than violent. But the judge didn't give him a break, and a Douglas County jury convicted Ryan of 18 charges that would see him spend 160 years or the rest of his life in prison. Number 11. Jordan Fuss Jordan Fuss was 19 years old when he reached speeds of over 90 miles an hour in his 2004 Infiniti G35 before crashing it into another vehicle carrying the Geraldo family. That accident resulted in the death of a six-year-old boy after the Geraldo family's car was split in half. Jordan was found to have a blood alcohol content of .21, which is far more than the state legal limit of .08. While Jordan was being sentenced for his crimes, he was visibly shaking and crying. His attorney argued for a reduced sentence and said his client was remorseful and had considered suicide. He also told the Geraldo family that he was sorry and that he wished it was him that died, not their son. So sorry. Jordan did appear genuinely remorseful throughout and even said he would give his life if it meant bringing his back. However, Jordan also admitted to smoking marijuana and using alcohol since the crash. He was subsequently sentenced to 14 years in prison, with prosecutors seeking the maximum sentence of 15 years. When he was being fingerprinted after the sentencing, he tearfully said, I love you so much, to his mother, father, brother, and the girlfriend he met online after the crash. Number 10. Eric Pendlin Child abuse is a horrific crime, and that's certainly one word of many to describe the actions of Eric Pendlin. When Eric's son was three months old, he was shaken so violently that he became permanently disabled. He suffered a broken neck, traumatic brain damage, hearing impairment, and almost complete blindness. He was also unable to hold his own head up. According to Sharon Lawson and her husband, who were fostering Eric, eventually adopted him and had been involved in the care of disabled and abused children for many years, the baby would always rely on people to bathe, dress, change, and feed him, along with administering pain medication. Maximum charges were sought because Eric had a prior record of robbery and a federal firearms charge. Prosecutors got their wish, and Eric was handed the maximum sentence for his crimes, even though he said he was innocent. As he was led out of the courtroom after being sentenced to 11 years, he shook his head and had an outburst that involved swearing at the judge and saying he hadn't done anything wrong. Number 9. Antonio Barbo 
Antonio Barbeau, 14 years old, and his friend Nathan Papp visited the home of Antonio's 78-year-old great-grandmother in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and she invited them inside. Once she had her back turned to call Antonio's mother, Antonio hit her on the head with a hatchet. Antonio then said he ran to the bathroom as he was feeling sick, but saw his friend hitting her multiple times with a hammer. His grandmother died from her injuries. He would spend at least 36 years behind bars for his crimes and would be eligible for parole by around 50 years old. During the trial, Antonio showed a wide range of emotions. He would wipe away tears at times, and he even smirked and shook his head when the prosecutor spoke. Your grandma, sister, friend, when I had no right to do so. He pleaded no contest and was convicted of killing his great-grandmother. He broke down and sobbed when he was sentenced and tried to read an apologetic statement. However, he started crying while reading it, and his defense attorney had to read it. <laughs> He, too, was on the brink of tears as he read it. The judge said that the sentence was the minimum based on the crime and that the crime was nothing short of horrific. According to the judge, he had not seen anything of this nature, not even close, in his 24 years on the bench. Number 8. Jeffrey McDonald Jeffrey McDonald beat his girlfriend Alyssa Johnson to death in their home in Dongan Hills. He then propped her against a bed with severe blunt impact injuries to the head, neck, and extremities before taking a photo of her in this position, likely after she was already dead. For his horrific crimes, and even after crying and apologizing to Alyssa's family, he was sentenced to 12 years in jail. While his crying in court may have looked convincing to some, it wasn't to the judge. Judge Mario F. Matei said he wasn't impressed by Jeffrey's expression of sorrow and said he didn't need any crocodile tears in front of him. He also said that Jeffrey was a coward for beating up a 107-pound defenseless woman. Your lack of compassion is palpable. You don't have an ounce of decency in your body, he said. Jeffrey said he was sorry for the pain he had caused and said Alyssa was the love of his life. As he was led to a holding cell through a side door, a woman said, hold your head, bro, while another said, you're a demon. Number 7. Manson Bryant Manson Bryant from Lake County was no stranger to the court system or prison. He had appeared before Judge Eugene Lucci's bench at least three or four times and has a criminal history dating back to 1999 as a juvenile. The last time this judge sentenced him to a crime was for four years, but this time he was in court for a violent home invasion and robbery while he was on parole. The maximum prison sentence for his crime was 30 years, but the judge sentenced him to 22 years after he felt Manson showed some remorse. Although he quickly realized that the remorse he supposedly showed might have been an act. Judge Lucci said the last time he sentenced Manson, he acted out briefly, but not like this. He went on a tirade, swearing at the judge until Judge Lucci had enough. He added six years onto his sentence, bringing the total to 28 years. Manson was then forcibly removed from the courtroom by Lake County Sheriff's Office deputies. 22 years? Wait his attorney, Daniel Williams, said sentencing hearings could be emotional and Manson had an emotional and regrettable reaction. He said that Manson was otherwise composed throughout the entire trial, even as the verdict was rendered. They intended to appeal the ruling and sentence. Number 6. Tony Farmer some people get angry when they're sentenced to prison. Others cry, scream, and swear. Ohio high school basketball star 18-year-old Tony Farmer collapsed. He melted onto the floor and, once standing upright with the help of a sheriff's deputy, continued to look in absolute disbelief as he was sentenced to three years in prison in 2012. Years on that as well. Tony Farmer, who is 6 feet 7 inches tall and ranks among the top high school basketball players in the country, had a bright future ahead of him after being recruited by several major colleges. However, he stood before the court accused of kidnapping, assaulting, and threatening his ex-girlfriend, Andrea Lane. He pleaded guilty to all charges and was released in 2015. Following his release, Tony wanted to enroll in Lincoln College but was refused admission, so he signed on to play basketball with Lee College, a Baytown, Texas community college. After his sophomore year, he became a professional basketball player and put his name in for the 2017 NBA Draft, where U.S. college basketball players were selected for NBA teams. He was ultimately not successful. In 2020, police in Louisiana issued a warrant for Tony's arrest on felony domestic abuse battery. Number 5. 
Erica May Butts and Shanita Latrice Cunningham. Somerville, South Carolina couple Erica Butts and Shanita Cunningham received sentences of life in prison for killing a three-year-old girl, Serenity Richardson. Serenity had been visiting Erica and Shanita, who were her godmother and mother's best friend, at their home in Somerville. This was where the abuse took place. Both Erica and Shanita beat her with plastic coat hangers and a belt. The only part of her body that wasn't harmed were the soles of her feet. When the two women learned they would be spending the rest of their lives in jail, they both collapsed, wailed, and hyperventilated in the courtroom. The entire scene was incredibly dramatic. Court officials had to pick both women up off the floor, and they were held in chairs before being wheeled out of the room. A clerk was heard asking if any EMTs were present in the building, while others tried to get Erica to slow down her breathing. Erica's mother also had to be thrown out of the courtroom by three staff members when she began shouting at her daughter to get up and started screaming that she couldn't leave her baby like this. The mother's cries rang out across the courtroom, trumping the reactions of even the two women being sentenced. Number 4. Adrian Dunn Ex-con Adrian Dunn was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of 24-year-old Rakin Tariq Charles. Rakin was shot in the back in an apartment complex parking lot during a supposed drug deal. During the closing arguments, prosecutors referred to Adrian's already extensive criminal record. They said he's been to prison twice for possessing a firearm even after the murder of Rakin. He had also committed another shooting before the murder and has shown zero remorse. While prosecutor Jason Goss held the hand of Rakin's mother, he asked the jury for a life sentence for Adrian's crimes. He said the Charles family had to suffer because of the defendant, but Adrian's lawyer said 34 to 40 years would be more appropriate so that he had a chance of getting out and being an asset to the community. Even if the jury had taken that statement on board, it didn't make any difference as he was sentenced to life after deliberating for two hours. <laughs> When the sentence was handed down, Adrian had an outburst and wrestled with deputies as they tried to escort him from the courtroom. Number 3. Michael Madison Michael Madison had an abusive and chaotic childhood, but that wasn't enough to convince the jury not to sentence him to death for multiple counts of aggravated murder and kidnapping. Michael killed three people and wrapped their bodies in garbage bags. One of those victims was Sherelda Terry, whose father was giving a victim impact statement in the courtroom. When her father walked to the front of the courtroom to give his statement, he turned towards Michael, who was just a few feet away, and Michael smiled at him maliciously. That was enough for Sherelda's father to run at Michael, throw himself across the desk, and try to get at him. Sheriff's deputies swarmed at him while a woman could be heard screaming, No! 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 in the background. A 15-minute delay followed, but the hearing continued. Michael received the death sentence, and the judge said life in prison wasn't an option based on the horrific nature of his crimes. Prosecutor Tim McGinty said the death penalty was for criminals like Michael, who are the worst of the worst. Michael didn't make any statements during his hearing, only to answer the judge's questions. Number 2. Kyandria Cook Kyandria was 18 years old when she was sentenced to 20 years in state prison. She had used a dating app to set up a robbery that caused another teenager to be shot. Circuit Judge Matthew Foxman read out the sentence that included 20 years for a carjacking charge, 15 years for attempted carjacking with a deadly weapon, and 15 years for a battery felony. All three sentences were to be served concurrently. Kyandria's mother immediately started crying and wailing when the sentence was read out. she dropped to the floor in her seat and had to be consoled by those around her. Kyandria's mother's reaction was enough to make Kyandria cry, and she pleaded with the judge. All the commotion and noise made it necessary for the judge to restate his sentence before Kyandria was eventually led from the room, crying. According to online news sources, Kyandria and her boyfriend had lured Perry Nita to South Daytona so that they could buy cannabis and sleep with him. Nita had a 17-year-old with him, Emmanuel Purcell. Kyandria got into his car, got back out again to go get money, and her boyfriend, Kendrick Bass, got in the back seat wearing a mask. 
Emmanuel pushed Kendrick out of the car, and Kendrick shot him in the stomach. Fortunately, he survived. Two months after the 20-year sentence was given, Kyandria was able to withdraw her no-contest plea, and her initial sentence was changed. This was due to a miscommunication with her previous attorney. Later, she was given an 11-year prison sentence with 20 years of probation that would run with her prison term. Number 1. Franklin Williams 32-year-old Franklin Williams was accused of three armed robberies in the Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Court. Franklin wouldn't stop talking during the sentencing hearing, even after Judge John Russo had given him several warnings over a half-hour period. I'm the judge in the matter. Shut your mouth, and I'll tell you when you can talk. You got it? But it wasn't just the judge he was talking over, he was also interrupting his own attorneys, which certainly didn't seem to be helping his case. The situation got so bad that the judge ordered for Franklin's mouth to be taped shut. So that is exactly what happened. He was made to sit down and red tape was put over his mouth to stop him from talking, although it didn't have the desired effect and he was still able to speak. This situation is bizarre, and the world thought so as well. When the video of this happening went viral, the Cleveland judge apologized and recused himself from the case. The judge said that as a judge and a lawyer, he had spent his career with the bench, public, bar associations, and community groups promoting confidence in the justice system. He said he was concerned that this particular hearing eroded some of that trust. The judge also said that, in retrospect, even though there is a legal precedent for gagging a defendant to maintain order in a courtroom, he apologized for taking that action. Some of these reactions were pretty typical, like crying as the realization hits them, but some were downright chilling. Imagine having a killer laugh in your face. Doesn't bear thinking about. Which one shocked you the most, and can you think of any others like these? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!